As the sun shone softly with mercy in the early month of Ramadan, Muslims take orders in entertainment, sports, arts, and media converged at temple to gain from the bounties of Ramadan. Tunde Falawiyo, Sound Sultan, Vijay Adams, Munirat Leki, also known as Anto, and others were there to grace the lecture and iftar, hosted by temple owned by Idris Olorunimbe and Nainjan Ninja owned by Sound Sultan, as Imam Abdurrahman Ahmad delivered the lecture of the day. Even Bisola, though a Christian, shared in the bounties of the season. The kids were not left out. Catch them young, they say. Aleph TV, be inspired. What is the purpose of life? There are as many answers as there are people. Depending on the peculiarity of their upbringing, their environment, their orientation, their understanding, the, the kind of pressure they are, on, they, are, they are under, and especially what drives them. It is not what they drive. I, I know most of you drive premium machines. Now, to so many people, the purpose of life is to come and make it. Yeah. To arrive. To be a monk, to some, is just to make money. And that's why you see, we're just looking for money, money, money. We have not lost it, but we're looking for it. Those who have money are looking for power. You start out looking for money. When you have money, yes, you have it now, we've arrived. This money will not make meaning unless we are able to consolidate it to look for power. I've been taught in strategy studies that for you to verify your reason, you have to ask a series of five whys. Why? Number one, why? And number two, why? And number three, why? And number four, why? And number five, why? If you are able to answer the five whys, then you have a solid reason. Otherwise, it is a fluke. Because you run into a cul-de-sac. If fame is the purpose of life, why do most stars end up with an OD? Why are they dependent on drugs? Money is good. But it's like food. You need only so much and no more. If the purpose of life is to come and reproduce, then ask yourself, after reproduction, what then is the purpose? You want to marry and get kids? Now you have them. First, um, two months into the marriage, you got pregnant. Nine months down the line, you have triplets. Nine months after, or less than nine months, you got pregnant again. And you got twins. twins. And then the paradox is now catching up with you. Hey, 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 you will not kill me. Hey, these children, I'm pity of me now. Let me do your mother now. What is the purpose then? If that is the purpose of life, then after having children, there is no purpose again. If power be the purpose of life, after acquiring power, what purpose is left? But all of these are mere ephemeralities. They cannot stand the test of time. And they cannot answer the existential questions that innately 
man will ask, why are we here? Why are we here? The nature of the human mind, the human soul, is that it will continue to ask questions. You will suppress it up to a point, and after some points, it will just be staring you in the face. It will not go away. You will not be able to placate it. And that is why most stars will come around and tell us their life is purposeless. They don't have a meaning. They are actually in bondage. Wealth, fame, power, or what we call success does not give meaning to life. In fact, it interrogates, it interrogates life. It creates a void. The human mind is on a mission to conquer. And after one conquest, you are set for another battle. What is the purpose of life? Why are you here? With all these endowments that Allah has given you, the human brain cannot be reproduced. No science to date and never. Forget artificial intelligence. Artificial is still artificial and is limited. By the way, it takes the human mind to conceive of artificial intelligence. The human mind is deep, is wide, is limitless. Do you think you could have acquired this installed capacity for no reason? Look at the mechanism of sight only to reproduce it. One, one eye. They say you need a minimum of $12 million. It will not be this small. It will not be this efficient. It will not be this self-maintaining. But then it will have approximate capacity to see. They say you need $12 million. It will not fit here, but you can see. And you require a 24 kV generator to power it 24 hours. That cannot fit into our system. Where do you put 24 kV generator? And how do you carry it about? But Allah has given you two, no cost. The one who has brought us here has not brought us to make money, to reproduce, to have fame, to acquire power and consolidate it. He has brought us so that we come and worship him. But what is worship? Islam has the best and the most comprehensive definition of worship. Aside from paying obeisance to the one who has created us, it is also the sum total, worship is the sum total of everything that you do. And in a very beautiful hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu some of the Sahaba companions went to the prophets and they complained. The rich people have gone away with all the rewards. Because they pray the way we pray, they fast the, the way we fast, they also go to jihad. So what's going to be our stand? The prophet said, okay, I'm going to teach you something that will make you at least come even with them. He said, if you smile 
at the face of your brother. It is act of. They were not sufficiently excited. He said, if you smile at the face of your wife, it is charity. If you go ahead and you graduate the smile, it is charity. If you go ahead and graduate the graduation, it is charity. And after it all, if you take a shower for every drop of water, it will be the equivalent of an angel who will be asking Allah's forgiveness for you. They were excited. They said, Ya Rasulullah. So we get a reward for doing that too? He said, come. If you had done it illegitimately, would you not be sanctioned? So if you do it legitimately, you will be rewarded. For putting food on the table for your family, it is worship. For earning your livelihood, it is worship. For being neighborly, it is an act of worship. This is the reason why Allah has created us. To worship, to be selfless, to be altruistic, to radiate goodness. This is what is going to give meaning to your life. And in very specific terms, as take home, these are the few things we need to uh, take note of. How are we different? How can Islam, for instance, give meaning to your life and purpose to your existence? For us to discover meaning and purpose, we need faith. You can't do without faith. It's either you have faith in God or you have faith in drugs. Yeah? But you cannot just exist. You realize that the life of this world is just a test. Please go and ask those who have made it. Muhammad Ali would have gone into oblivion. Go read his biography. What kept him, even in his sickness, was his faith. That's what gave meaning and purpose to his life. You can live forever. Even if you live forever, you may not be relevant forever. You will be eclipsed into oblivion. Then there is the next stage. You die. And there's another life in the grave. You don't believe? I pray you don't find out when you get there. But there is life in the grave. It is just a transition from one stage to another stage. It is a place of rest. I want to qualify that rest depending on what you have sent forth. It is a place of waiting. We'll spend some time in the grave. And the grave is a very terrible place. No ventilation, no AC, no fan, nothing. As soon as you drop dead, the first thing you lose is your name. They say, go and bring the dead body. That's you, dead body. God. They strip you of everything. After that, you'll be resurrected. You'll be, bring, you'll be brought back to life. And that is the big deal. And that is the day that you're going to be judged. We can say, no, no, don't judge. You don't judge, but that is the day you are going to be judged. You are going to be judged according to the fairest standards. You know what? One thing about this day, for us who are Muslims, is that the record of our deed is kept somewhere. And we are going to be resurrected with something hung around our necks. كُلُّ إِنسَانٍ أَلْزَمْنَاءُ طَائِرَهُ فِي عُنُكِ وَنُخْرِجُ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ كِتَابًا يَلْقَاءُ مَنْشُورًا Aleph TV, be inspired. Everyone will be resurrected with that. And then it contains the record of your deed. It has unlimited storage capacity. It is plug and play. You don't need to say anything. As soon as you stand in front of the big screen, it will read 
uh, that device and then it will start to play. All your away matches will start rolling. Hmm? And all the all the terrible things you have done that you think no one has seen. And then man will say, Yeah, why not? Will be titles. Man in Hazan Kitab. What kind of a record is this? It has not left even my minute details. All the corners that you have been cutting. It's very easy. You know, I'm, I'm on location. Don't you know I'm on location? Yes, it will locate you. I mean, what is your duty? Go on location. I mean, when people follow you to location. And you can perform all manners of atrocities on location. It will play that day. Say, yeah. Ah! Yeah, boy. I need to be too late. And then, some of us will go to the right. Inshallah. I don't know about you. That's where I want to be. If it makes any sense to you. Or it doesn't. That's where I want to go. But some people will go to the left. And one day, there, is the equivalent of 50,000 years. So you can't have 50,000 years here. So choose wisely. You are better, you are lighter, you are happier, you are more fulfilled if you worship your creator. And worship is not just prayers. Worship is being humane, is being human, is being considerate, is being honest, is being upright, is being dependable and reliable. He's being a father, a husband, a mother, a wife, a sister, a supporter, a friend. He's being generous and charitable. The sum total of all these is worship. That is why we are here. That is the purpose of creation. That is the source of joy and fulfillment. That is the meaning of life. Aleph TV, be inspired. Questions were asked for further clarification. My question is related sort of to uh, what Alaja just uh, talked about, and it's related to halal income. If you work in a, an institution that ends Riba as a proprietary income, and you work there as a staff. Does that also mean that whatever you are being paid as an employee is also sort of haram income? Income is haram. halal. It's not haram. Because Islam is very well balanced. It doesn't ask where the person gets his or her money from. He asked, what service or services are you providing to earn the money? Now, um, you know, for example, the parents sell alcohol and they send you to school. They give you upkeep allowance. Is the money you receive halal or haram? It is halal, it is halalist. I have a friend of mine that is always, every time I want to buy something from him, he will always tell me, I got it, if he wants to sell it for 60,000 naira, he will tell me, I got it for 60, I mean 57,000 naira. Every time. Like, there's always, always like this 3,000 three, um, three, three naira is the gain that is on everything that he's selling. And I know that sometimes that he gains more than that. So I want you to address that. Is that his lying part of um, business? Certainly, lying is not, is not part of halal business. It robs uh, the business of Baraka. And it is even not necessary for you to disclose your costs. 
unless you are in a monopoly or a monopsony. Otherwise, it's a free market or relatively, there is no free market anywhere, relatively free market. You can name your price. Um, if it suits your, your client or your customer or your buyer, he will buy. Otherwise, he will move elsewhere. But it is highly discouraged for you to call Allah to witness because you want to transact business. It is legitimate. Don't make what is halal, haram for yourself by lying. Islam is beautiful. Those other events gathered to observe the Maghrib prayer led by Imam Abdurrahman Hamad and for Iftar, it's a three-course meal all the way. Not forgetting networking, the setting was a perfect one for the brothers and sisters to network and strengthen further the bond of brotherhood. My message is that uh, the month of Ramadan is really a big favor. Witnessing the month of Ramadan alive and healthy is uh, a grace of Allah Taala, which everyone should take advantage of. So everything he said here tonight are things that he tells me, he reminds me of the fact that no matter uh, how much of an entertainer you are supposedly, you need to keep your connection with Allah because obviously the hereafter is as important as the life here. Ramadan tends to like um, uh, try as much as possible to keep themselves uh, purified or should I say um, abstain from a lot of things. So what you just need to do after Ramadan is to try as much as possible to keep it going. Continue praying the, uh, the time you're supposed to be praying. Continue waking up uh, during the night to to pray to Allah. I think one of the biggest lessons I actually learned is that I'm not doing as bad as I thought. All of us as Muslims, there's always something that we can learn. None of us are perfect. There's always a piece of information that someone can tell us that can imp impact us. So I've definitely been enlightened and educated today. Something I've also learned is that there's some things that we thought were haram that aren't really haram. So especially now that I'm in a news business, I've learned some things that I'll be able to make sure that even though I'm now in the entertainment industry, I'll continue to follow the rules of Islam. Honestly speaking, it's just to inspire. My inspiration and Idris' inspiration uh, is to inspire the youth and the entertainment industry and the youth uh, at large, you know, who are Muslims and Muslim uh, to come out of their shell to really proclaim Islam and also represent Islam in the best way they can without opening their mouths. Do you understand? It's, uh, it's way more than just saying it, it's living it. Aleph TV, be inspired. Mm -hmm.